your life now. I mean, you're talking about there being another season after yeah. this one, and then maybe a movie, but then mm -hmm. there's no Ari Gold anymore. Yeah. And there's the stage, you know, yeah. that you started with, that your family were acting teachers there. Yeah. And then you had that experience that, you know, at Speed the Plow. Yeah. With, was that bad for you? Was that something that's you know what it was you with it, the it, whole sushi thing? You know what's so interesting? It's like, as we learn about things in this life, I was a guy who ended up in the hospital. Yeah. Uh, I told my producers from the first week that I was deathly ill. I went to the, and, and got all my tests taken and showed it to them. I was like, I don't even know what this means. Mercury level 57, they've never seen this. I was completely ignored. And because I come from the stage, the show must go on. That's always been our credo. Like, I didn't think it was even an option to leave. So I kept going and I told the producers, I'm gonna keep going till I drop. I dropped, I ended up in the hospital. Now, as you know, there are two ways that this can fall out. I'm four months into a six month run, I end up in the hospital, Bill Macy, the great Bill Macy replaces me. We broke all box office records. Everyone goes off into the sunset. Or, it gets spun into whatever it gets spun into it and everyone loves a good fish story. And that's what it was. Um, but I just mean a personal hurt yeah, it for did. you. Oh, because it did hurt because you have to understand. It's an easy joke. It's a, it's like it's a, a late very, night. It is a late night everybody joke. Everybody can oh, tell you. Yeah. They can tell sushi jokes forever. I felt as if I was going to die. When I was in the hospital and when we went to arbitration, you can see that the, the doctor said to me, you could die on stage. You have a resting heart rate in the early, low 40s. You have a, a mercury level of almost 60. You're completely tapped and exhausted. You're done. You could have a heart attack and die on stage. The doctor said to me while I was in the hospital, how did your father pass away? And I told him and he said, you're not getting back on that stage. No one knows this. No one cares. It's not interesting. What's interesting is, is rich boy ate some sushi and bolted. That's interesting. So the rest of my life has suffered. And then to be accused of being a, 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 a coward and a charlatan and a non-stage actor, but that's what I am. That's but that's what I've the, always, that was the most shocking yeah. part of it because yeah. it wouldn't be somebody from Hollywood saying, I'm just trying out the stage. By, by the way, people don't just go and do Mammoth as a lark and open it on Broadway mm -hmm. and are able to do it. It's a, it's, a, it's a difficult thing. I had Epstein Barr slash Mono chronic fatigue syndrome, and mercury poisoning. I was crawling around and like, but people, it's easy and it's fun. He ate a bad piece of yellow tail. It was tail. more than that. There was a whole kind of uh, uh, pack mentality about it. It, it. When they would say that, they would also say, but he was at this club or he was out every night. And so if he could do that, why couldn't he be on the stage? I guarantee you, if I was out every night, you would have known about it. I was living a life um, that was so completely uncomfortable. Um, I, I would sleep until the moment I got on that stage. And then I got to the point where I would be 20 minutes in the performance and I would start shaking and I had no fuel. So what I had to do was I had to eat as much food as I could until the moment I got on stage and it could barely get me through that performance. Um, I went to arbitration and because I have nothing to hide, they said, can we see everything? I said, sure, here's my entire life, every night of it. And when you have four incidences of, of in, in four months of going and getting some sustenance after a show or whatever, it's slim pickings. Um, you know, I wasn't uh, slamming uh, tequila and champagne until a million o'clock with Puffy on a celebrity space shuttle. That was although, not, although that does sound kind of good. <laughs> yeah. When you left New York and went back home and were back in LA, yeah. did you want to just hide under the covers? Oh yeah, hide for sure. Yeah, just say, Disappear. I'm just not coming out here. Absolutely, but I also wanted to hide because I was so ill and I immediately was doing heavy chelation. Um, and the type of chelation I needed Here's what I did, and also another thing no one knows. I hired a doctor as soon as I got the test results to keep me 
alive and up and finish this run. So it was his job, and he said, I can't chelate you the way you need to be chelated. You need, intra you need intravenously to get this stuff out of your body. The problem is you're so toxic, you'd be in bed for four days, you can't miss one performance. So we're gonna have to do it orally, and we're gonna have to change your whole life. When a doctor comes in and says, I told, did you tell Jeremy Piven he could die on stage? Yes, I did. My attorney stood up and just said, what are we doing here? I've got to ask you these two more questions, though, before okay. you, know, you go off to your next adventure. Will it be painful for you, 2011-12, after that last season and after the movie of uh, Entourage, to say goodbye to Arago? I think it will be incredibly bittersweet because um, it's, it's been such a, uh, a joy and incredibly therapeutic and cathartic to play this character because it taps into the best and worst of who you could be. The last question I ask every guest is always a musical one. Okay. I always ask you to raise your voice in some kind of song. Oh my God. Well, listen, I read that you were Bernardo in West Side Story. I, I'm not a singer, and Bernardo, yes, you're right, back in the day, my father was a singer, had a great voice, but I'm from the generation of like listening to Biggie Smalls, like 5.46 in the morning, crack a dawn and now I'm yawning, wipe the cold from my eye, who is this page of me and why? It's my brother Pop from the barber shop talking about the intricate pop, mother want to stick you for your fly paper, yo love, drop the caper. I grew up on that stuff as opposed to, you know. Could I ask um, for the more? The come out tomorrow, Ma bet your bottom. There's, there could be a career in that. Annie is like prime <laughs> for a revival, but we'll take, we'll take Biggie Smalls. Yeah, thank you thank so you. much. Thank that you. That was wonderful.